Hello, welcome to Baltic World, a channel reporting on Northern, Central and Eastern Europe. My name is Chris Byrne, and today I have an unusual story from Lithuania, which is trying to ban certain performers from entering the country. We'll go through it and discuss. Uh, as I do, if you find value in this discussion, please like and subscribe and also consider sharing these videos. It helps grow the channel a ton and allows us to bring you more content. Let's get into it. So this is from Lithuania Radio and Television, a national broadcaster. It says, Lithuania wants to shut doors for pro-Kremlin performers. Lithuania has now banned Filip Kerkorov, a Russian pop star and supporter of Crimea's annexation, from performing in the country. Vilnius now hopes to avoid hosting other pro-Kremlin artists in the future. On Tuesday, Culture Minister Simonis Keres announced he plans to invite event organisers for a discussion. He said this comes in response to a remark by MP Remy Gigas, sorry, Zematitis in the parliament where he said that Russian pianist Nikolai Lugansky is scheduled to perform at the Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society. Quote, if you know he's a well-known pianist, a true virtuoso and things like that, but the most important thing is that this person regularly performs in Donbass the Russian-occupied territory of Ukraine, Zimotaitis said. The culture minister said Lugansky could not be compared to Russian singer Filip Kerkorov, who is banned from coming to Lithuania for five years for his numerous visits to Russian annexed Crimea, denial of Ukraine's territorial integrity and justification for Russia's aggression. Quote, we wouldn't want to have a situation in Lithuania when only those performers who go through checks by the special services and things like that could go on stage. How would that make us look? But how to resolve this issue? I plan to invite executives of companies organising concerts and have a comprehensive discussion, the minister said. The last time Lugansky performed in Donetsk was in August. On January 19, Lithuania's Migration Department, in response to the Foreign Ministry's request, put Kerkorov on the persona non grata list for his justification and etc. etc. Let's leave it there. I, I think this is a really fascinating discussion. Is it acceptable in a liberal democracy to prevent people from coming in to perform as entertainers for their personal political views? And I personally, and this is just my opinion, think that the threshold for that has to be extremely high. After all, one of the things that separates us as Western countries from authoritarian dictatorships is our willingness to entertain freedom of speech, sovereignty of the individual, and different points of view. So I can understand it if one of the brand image characteristics of the performer in question is their political persuasion. So, for example, I'm on here, I have a channel discussing a whole range of political issues to the extent that anyone watching this, they will have an understanding of my perspective on things. And therefore, if I seek to enter a country that is aware of uh, the things that I say and do and would prevent me from entering their country on that basis, I think that it's a, a reasonable step for them to take because you know, I'm a political actor. However, if I was a pianist like Nikolai Lugansky uh, and I just happen to have private views that you know, perhaps the Chinese government doesn't like or the Russian government doesn't like, I would feel deep prejudice if I was prevented from performing in a public audience uh, uh, because of my political persuasions. And to that end, I have to disagree with uh, this MP where he says, you know, the most important thing is that this person regularly performs in Donbass. I mean, Nikolai Lugansky is an incredible pianist. I mean, if you look him up online, he can play. Uh, and he, like all Russians, you know, heavily propagandized by the government. They're not exposed to open debates about whether or not Crimea is part of Russia or not. Uh, they are fed, you know, the, the single line as put forward by the United Russia Party and uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, and and that is that Ukraine is is part of Russia, and therefore it's unsurprising that he, like all other Russians, are going to take a fairly nationalistic view on these issues. And so uh, if you ban 
uh, you know, people just because they happen to have a, a you know, national Russian view, no matter how disagreeable you find it, if their purpose in Lithuania isn't to promote that view, but rather to do other things like play the piano, uh, then it is kind of churlish to um, get in the you know allow politics to really drag that down, and it kind of hurts the people to people relationships. At some point, you do want to have certain avenues of discussion and of, of relationships of people to people engagement. Uh, even with your traditional adversaries, and uh, Russia is not going to go anywhere. So I think that while you know the um, the political disagreements that exist between uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, and the liberal West and the Baltic states in particular is is serious and grave, uh, it should not be you know overwhelming to every aspect of our human interaction and, and personal thought. Uh, now I didn't know about. Uh, Philip Kerkorov. I had to look him up. Uh, and, you know, likewise, I think I don't understand why the culture minister puts him in a different category uh, to Lugansky. Uh, perhaps it's because, you know, Lugansky is just an amazing pianist and Kerkorov is a bit of a, you know, a B grade pop star, in my view. Uh, so perhaps, you know, the culture minister is just more of a, of a classical music fan. But beyond that, it's not, it's not clear what the actual, you know, where that line is drawn. Uh, And I can understand why the culture minister wants to, you know, bring people into a room and have a discussion and try and work out what the right thing to do in these situations is. But I will point out something that's, you know, honestly a little embarrassing for the Lithuanians here, and I'm a huge Lithuania fan, which is that Philip Kerkorov isn't banned by the Ukrainian government. They actually did prohibit him for a while and then they took him off that list and so now Philip Kerkorov can perform all over Ukraine. It is a bit odd in that sense for Lithuania to prohibit uh, his attendance in Lithuania when the Ukrainians, for whom have the greatest degree of uh, you know um, contempt for what's happened to their own country, isn't prohibiting themselves. So I think the line really is whether or not the individual intends to do subversive activity within the country. So like I said, if uh, I'm a political actor and I go somewhere and it's probable that I'm going to you know, lecture on things that are anti-government and things like that, then it's understandable for, for that you know, whoever's in charge in, in that country to prevent me from entering. Uh, it's not necessarily a good thing in every situation, but it is understandable. But if I was to go and, and play the piano or, or you know, sing or, or do whatever, you know, write poetry, uh, I think it would be a very uh, a bad look for a country to ban me, it, whatever their political uh, makeup because I happen to have a personal view, particularly if that personal view just aligns with most people within my own country where I'm from. I mean, unless the Lithuanians, the Baltic states, are willing to ban all Russian nationals from visiting their country or make some kind of weird pledge that they believe that Crimea is part of Ukraine and not Russia, uh, then this is really an administrative nightmare. And I kind of agree with uh, what the culture minister has said in terms of their concerns that, you know, they don't want everybody entering Lithuania to have to go through some kind of purity test in order to ensure that they can, you know, enter the country. And there's also just a this is a bad idea aspect, which is the best way to change minds and perspectives is to expose them to different points of view. And it's highly improbable that most people in Russia hear anything other than, you know, Crimea is a essential and integral part of the Russian Federation uh, from any quarter. It's it's not like they have those national debates. Uh, they don't have these discussions on foreign policy, drawing in different perspectives from around the world. No, they're just, you know, they, they advance whatever the nationalist sentiment of the time happens to be. If you have these performers who have tremendous influence within their own countries going out to the rest of the world and being exposed to perspectives that differ from that, you know, they actually get to engage with those that have been you know, affected by the Ukrainian civil war, uh, the, the undermining of, of norms and laws, of, you know, the, the consequences that has for the rest of the world. Uh, th- their perspective might actually change. But if you just prohibit them outright from entering the country because you don't like the ideas that they harbour, uh, then you're really 
closing down an opportunity. It's it's actually it's a a, a known goal in a way. Uh, there isn't really you're not going to change anybody's mind by doing that. So my personal view is that it's a waste of time trying to police this. Uh, so long as we believe in freedom of speech, freedom of thought, uh, freedom of association, sovereignty of the individual, then people who happen to be ballet dancers or or harp players or you know, pianists, they need to be able to just come and go as they please and the people that will go see them are the people that want to pay for their performances. Uh, and I think it's great that the... Um, Nikolai Legansky who played the Lithuanian National Philharmonic Society because the audience will probably really enjoy the performance and uh, as long as you know Legansky doesn't get up and do some massive protest on stage and that's made clear to him that you know the, the, the issue is sensitive in Vilnius um, then all power all power to the organizers and uh, I think the culture minister hopefully comes away from this and saying look this is too hard and you know, we should just get back on, get get on with our lives. Uh, that's my view. People will definitely disagree with me on this one. So uh, I would love to hear your arguments against it. Uh, just, you know, have the debate down below, be respectful to one another. Uh, this is one of those issues where a lot of people of goodwill can disagree and people with good faith who aren't bad people uh, will have different points of view. And uh, as I said, uh, it's unsurprising that the culture minister would, would want to have this discussion. Uh, so for what it's worth, random guy from Australia, that's my perspective, and I would love to hear yours. Uh, thank you so much. Goodbye.